You ever have one of those days where you know you're trying to do just way, way, way too much? I think today is one of those days. I've got a meeting later. That's sort of why I'm all dressed up at the moment. I just figured to go ahead and get ready for the meeting. We've got FOMC today. And then all of a sudden, I just started thinking about the way things used to be and the way things are now. some hours before uh, the Fed rate decision, as well as the subsequent press conference that we are all waiting on. So I thought I would hop on here for just a bit. Earlier in the week, just thinking back to sort of the social media space that I'm back now inside of here, right? I'm now back in the social media space. And I was thinking about when the whole thing started back in 2007. In 2007, you went back and you started trying to discuss investing and trading. <laughs> back then, there was almost no one. I mean, pretty much a ghost town. There was myself. Uh, back then, it was Thanos 43. And by the way, that's before Marvel Endgame buildup. He was the first with that moniker, Thanos 43, the destroyer of worlds, uh, but hit the bid and with his sort of comedy. I still go back and watch some of those. Storming the Bastille, every once in a while when we're having like a really bad down day, I will go down, I think that's on the old Thanos 43. It was in 2008 when we started finding out that basically we didn't know if, if the people who had our funds had our funds. That's the only way to put it. Everybody was looking over at their counterparties going, uh, do you have what you say you have? And there's a video that he did, a bit of trading comedy. Just the, the eminent New York trader, right? Um, he did on storming the Bastille. And whenever we're having a really down day, I remember I was with a bunch of guys during the March 2020 meltdown. And of course, that video had to come out. <laughs> Storm the best steel. Oh my God. That still brings tears to my eyes. I was laughing so hard. But now, right, that, that was Thanos 43. Now it's hit the bid. Uh, David Waring was around back then. I remember David Waring. And if I'm forgetting anyone, I apologize. But there weren't many is the point. That was about it. You know, as far as real traders. A lot of people were trying to pretend to be traders, but weren't real traders. Uh, actually, that channel, that channel that I ran back then is still around it's still there i have not contributed to that channel in 10 years and it still to this day has 8,300 subscribers or something like that it fluctuates right but there's just no content so what i've been doing is i've been throwing all the gtc stuff on it as well right but it still has 8,300 subscribers and i haven't contributed to that thing in 10 years i mean it was a, it was a lot higher obviously when there was regular content millions of views but, and going back to that time, there were just a lot of know-nothing hacks. I don't know. Do we want to call this a trip down memory lane? And sort of an interesting paradigm developed, at least with me, is that a lot of know-nothing hacks came along. And I would have to dispel a lot of the nonsense out there. There was me getting the, allow me to, I don't know, have a little bit of a Raymond Reddington moment here, getting the 2008 financial crisis completely right. Again, it's the old line. I never tire of being right. I remember during the bubble in silver, which <laughs> for anyone that was around back then, I had a lot of fun with that one. Because there was just so much verifiable nonsense, right? And what happens in any asset where there's a derivative traded, where the price gets blown up to that extent, right? And it's not just any asset. I, I don't care what it is, any derivative. I don't care if it's corn. I don't care if it's wheat. I don't care if it's, a, I don't care what it is. The exchanges have to raise the margin requirements, right? And oh, the cries of manipulation came out and I just had a field day with that. So that, that, that sort of paradigm just really sort of developed where I was the guy that, you know, dispelled the nonsense. And I, I quickly sort of accidentally fell into that space. I came me making money and I really discovering that, that people are crazy. And I don't care if it's here in the social media space. 
uh, partners as well. Boy, there was one partner. Oh my God. And it wasn't until he became a business partner that like everyone realized in the room realized this guy is crazy with a capital C. Wow. He and I would often get into it. When he left, all the other partners were like, thank God he's gone. I'm like, well, where were you guys when all that was, you know, going on when he was in the in the company? And they were like, hey, you know, you were handling it. <laughs> I was like, well, thanks a lot for putting it all on me. But they even brought out stuff that he was doing that I hadn't realized. And one of them was like, yeah, you didn't notice that? You didn't notice the one-upmanship? If one of us does something, he's got to do it. You didn't notice that? But my point being is that just discovering, it doesn't matter if it's in the social media space. It doesn't matter. It's something that Jocko said one time, and I loved it. People are crazy. They're nuts. If you take any distribution, just mean distribution, not even anything with any fat tails or anything, just a mean distribution, apply that to intelligent quotient, that, that says something about your base population that you're dealing with. <laughs> so have I've learned to have no expectations over time. So, I, you know, like I said, left for institutional efforts. Came back, here I am, new corporate structure, right? I suppose, yeah, we've already talked about that. Well, why come back? This is something I've always wanted to do. And I gotta be honest, I've always enjoyed it. As I've said before in a podcast before, it keeps me sharp. So it keeps me very sharp. And at the same time, I don't care what I'd be doing. I'd always wanna be teaching. You know, I, I you put me in any scenario that you want to develop, uh, you know, build a company up, sell it off for 400 million, and Dan's got all the money and he can just go traipse the hollers with a 30 odd six and just be happy for the rest of his days. No, I'd still do this, I think, because I like, I, one of my business partners actually told me this one time. He said, you, you're involved in a lot of interests. You're a great trader, rock star, but honestly, at your core, you're a you're a teacher. It's what I enjoy doing. So once I found that corporate structure that we could sort of slide uh, GTC traders into, I thought, hey, this is sort of cool. We, we can do it that way, <laughs> right? So I don't have to. So we came back. And what's interesting in the social media space is there's still a lot of fraudsters, right? You do a search on how to trade and invest and you just see stuff that's just nonsense. I'll have more to say on that later. But I noticed something else that has changed in this space of social media and sort of like in FinTwit, uh, it doesn't matter if it's in FinTwit, if it's on YouTube, we're at, uh, it's different now. And it seems I am no longer alone. As you can see very quickly, guys that are in the social media space that have a verifiable institutional record. And they're starting more and more and more to inhabit that space which will make it harder for us at GTC Traders to stand out, sort of ramp back up to that speed of 1,000 subscribers, 10,000, 30,000, you know. It's going to make it a lot harder for us to, to stand out when the other people in the space are also from an institutional background. To which I say, good. That's the way it should be. And for those of you that were around and, and saw me, you know, during that time period from like 2007 onwards, you saw that that's what I always wanted. I'd rather see the space inhabited with actual institutional guys and compete against them in sort of a social media space. The, the markets I trade, I mean, that's what I do anyways in the markets we trade. It's not like I'm, you know, trying to trade against Bubba Joe and his harebrained trading strategy built on the movement of tectonic plates or something. God knows what. Well, I mean, they're in there and it's easy to take their money, but you know, you're, you're trading against other institutional efforts. So I would rather be in that space. I would rather sit down to a poker game with other real poker players. I would rather trade against other institutional people than trade against know nothing hacks. And especially the guys that are trying to purport themselves as trading gurus. There is no guru, but the market itself. The market is the ultimate guru. End of story. The rest of us, and I don't care who we are and how much time we've been in, the rest of us are students. We're maybe working on our master's, maybe we're working on our doctorate, uh, but we're the students. The market is the teacher. And I'd rather inhabit the space with other guys who are working on their doctorate or you know, working on their master's than playing dodgeball with a bunch of second graders. Sorry, just the way I think about it. So. I don't know. I just had a trip down memory lane. I've also got a meeting that I have to like run off to right now. That's why I'm all sort of dressed up at the moment. Um, I've got a meeting I've got to run off to. Oh, okay. I've got a little bit of time. But 
those I, w- I was just sort of thinking about the social media space and the the, the way things used to be no just sort of i don't know if it's me being nostalgic or what and then just sort of evaluating actually what it came about was for me just evaluating the state of the social media space and just how much things have changed but for now just a real quick video that has just simply been our thoughts not yours any questions comments concerns post them below like subscribe and all that fun stuff but uh yeah for now that's simply been what it always is our thoughts are just good until they're canceled and they are just our thoughts not yours for whatever that date is as always stay safe trade well and remember that love doesn't cost a dime